hi, it's Adam with webstarts.com. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a mobile-friendly e-commerce store using WebStarts. If it's your first time to the channel, be sure to tap the subscribe button and enable notifications, and you'll be the first to find out when I release a new video on how to create your very own free website, online store, blog, internet marketing, and a lot more. It's important that you have a store that functions well and looks good on a mobile device like a smartphone, iPhone, Android devices, that sort of thing, because over 80% of people have made a purchase from their smartphone, and of course most people have smartphones these days. Because your shoppers are viewing your online store on a smaller screen, it's important that you create product titles and descriptions using a larger font size, that your buttons are large enough that they're easily tapped, and it's also difficult for shoppers to fill out online forms. So when they go to checkout and they enter their billing and shipping information, that can be a little bit tedious. And what I'm gonna show you in this video is how WebStarts provides a feature where they can save their billing and shipping information and create a login. So the next time they make a purchase from you, they just need to log in instead of enter all that information. Let's get started by going to webstarts.com. If it's the first time you've come to webstarts.com, you'll just click that Get Started. It's free button located in the center of the page. That's going to take you to the Choose a Design page. This is where you choose the template that you'll be using to create your mobile-friendly online store. You can select any one of these templates. They're all 100% customizable and can be changed at any time. If you want to focus on ones that were designed specifically for online stores, you can select the online store category, but you can add e-commerce to any one of these templates. So you're not limited to selecting one from the online store category. When you're ready, just click the select button when you hover over the template that you'd like to use. And then of course you have a normal sign up process where you enter in your name, email address, and choose your password. One other thing to keep in mind is that you will need to verify your phone number with a code that's sent to you in a text message after this step. So make sure you enter that code in. We do that just to prevent people from trying to create scam websites and spammy stuff. So anyway, be sure to check that out. Now, once you've created your site, you'll be logged in and that's where I'm gonna pick up because I've already created, of course, an online store with WebStart. So I'm just gonna click log in. The first time you log into your WebStarts account, you're going to see the dashboard view. That's what we're looking at here. There's a few things I want to point out on the dashboard. Number one is when you receive an order from your online store, you'll get a notification. Those will appear here. You'll also receive notifications via text and email, and you can choose to change those settings if you don't like it by clicking the settings link. Uh, if you hover over the thumbnail image to your website and click edit site, that's where you'll be able to make edits and changes to the pages of your online store. We're going to get into that in just a moment. If you want to change your design, there's a link to do that and you can access backups of previous designs by clicking on this backups icon. You'll find a link to the published version of your website right here, so you can view what your website looks like. And then of course you have the ability to add a domain name to your website. So if you registered a domain name and you want to add it to your website or you want to register a domain name for the first time you do that, of course it does require that you have a paid subscription. Down here, notice there's an application called Store. We call these the application panels. And when they're blue, it means they're enabled. And when it's they're gray, it means that they're disabled. So if your store is gray, then you need to click on it to enable it. Mine's already enabled. So when I click on it, I open up the Manage Store view. This is where you handle most of the store functionality. For example, you can create your products. You can create product categories. You can take a look at your orders here. You can click on reports and run sales reports, create coupon codes. You can view your customer information. You can create shipping rules. You can create tax rules. And then you can do things like change your company name, upload a logo, and select your payment processor here as well. On that note, by default, when you enable the store application, you'll be able to accept payments via Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover. We partner with WePay by Chase Bank, and 
when when we do that an email is sent to you you click to confirm that email and then enter in your bank details so they know where to send your money if an order is placed we also support other payment processors so if you use stripe or authorize.net you can use those as well let's take a look at some of these products that i've already created these are just demo products here you can see there's a little thumbnail. You can rearrange the order that your products appear with this little handle here. And then you can go into each product and take a look at the details by clicking on it. You have a section where you can enter in the title, of course, for the product and then a description. And then you can create tags that just helps people find your products if they're using the search functionality. And then you can add as many images as you'd like. You can add videos, set your price, choose whether or not you want to charge tax. And then we have this place where you can create an SEO friendly URL. That's just a URL that ranks better on search engines like Google. And then here's where you assign a category or create a new category for your product. You can choose to enable or disable shipping and then enter your shipping uh, weight and also your package size. You can choose to hide an item from your catalog. That's good if you're running a sale on an item and you don't want to sell it for the same price to everyone. Variance is perfect if you're selling something that comes in different sizes, colors, or materials. And then inventory management, you can enable or disable. That just shows how many you have on stock on hand and it stops people from ordering if you uh, don't want to allow purchases of things that are not in stock. And then lastly, we have digital delivery, which is just for selling things like ebooks or uh, anything that can be delivered digitally, so software maybe a video, audio files, that kind of thing. Anyway, um, getting out of this, because this is not going to be the focus of the video, and taking a look at the actual layout of our online store, we're going to click on the Edit Site button, and then that's going to load up the Web Starts page editor. One of the best features of Web Starts is that it's true drag and drop. And what that means is that if you click on an element on the page, you can literally drag and drop it wherever you want it to appear. A lot of other website builders will just allow you to align things left, center, or right, or swap out images or boxes of text in an existing template. But everything is 100% customizable in Web Starts. This is helpful because you need to be able to create an original looking website to convey the value of your products or services so that people will actually make purchases from you. There are a few things that you should keep in mind while designing your website in Web Starts. The first is that each page is divided into three sections. The top section where your logo and your company name and your menu appear is called the header. And when you drag elements into the header, they appear in that same location on each page of your website. That provides consistency both to the look and navigation of your website. And that way you don't have to go to each page and try to place things like your logo, your business name, and your menu into the exact same location on every page. Similarly, you can go to the bottom of the page and this section highlighted in green is called the footer. And when you drag elements into the footer, they appear at the bottom of each page of your website. You can choose to enable or disable the header or footer by clicking on view and then just unchecking next to show header and show footer. The next thing you're going to want to keep in mind while designing your website is that each page element has its own layer. So that means that these elements, for example, this text could be sent backwards or brought forward. And when you select the element, you have the options to send it all the way to the back or send it backward a single layer, bring it forward a single layer, or bring it all the way to the front. So be careful not to put things like text boxes behind other elements that you don't want in front of them. So for example, if you put this button in front of your text, then the people who are visiting your website are not going to be able to see that text. If you ever lose track of where the elements are or the layers that they're on on your page, you can locate them by clicking edit and clicking select all. And what that does is it just selects all the elements so you can see where they exist on the page. One of the main differences between Web Starts and a lot of other website store builders is the fact that you can create not only the catalog of products that people can shop from, 
but you can create the supporting pages for your website very easily as well. And the way you can access the different pages of your website is select them from this drop down menu on the top left. You can also search by the name of the page. This allows you to do things like create a unique design for your home page, your about page, your contact page. If you have a privacy policy or you want to create a special page for your terms and conditions, or if you just want to create a landing page that links from your social media posts to a specific product or something like that, you can do that using Web Starts. Other online store builders are just letting you input the product information and then they're making all the choices about the pages that are displayed on your website. And a lot of them actually require you to know a little bit about HTML and then some of the others really have a very narrow uh, version that you can work with in terms of templates. So you can't drag and drop things exactly where you want them to appear. Something I wanna call your attention to is that we have these little sub headings like here you'll see store pages and that's where you can edit the store specific pages to your website and there are a few different ones one's called account another one's called cart login product and store if you go to account for example that's going to be the page that your shoppers are going to see when they're logged into their account as i mentioned earlier web starts lets the people who shop on your store save their email address and create a password so they don't have to re-enter their billing and shipping information every time they make a purchase. If you select the cart page, that's just the page where they view what's in the, their shopping cart. And then if you choose the login page, that's going to be the page where they can either sign up to create that shopping account or they can log into an existing account. And then there's a page called product and that's what's going to be viewable for the product details and that's where you're going to see things like the add to cart button and they'll be able to uh, enter the quantity of items that they want to purchase then lastly we're going to take a look at the store page that's that catalog page that i was talking about that a lot of the other online store builders limit you to now if you ever want to change the way that the information is displayed on these pages. You can do that by selecting what we call the store widget portion of the page and then clicking the settings icon attached to it. And depending on the page you're on, you'll see a different little settings box pop up here on the right. And this is where you can do things like you can change the number of products you want to display in a single column or the number of columns that you want to display. You can also change your image scaling. So if you like the look of a cropped image versus a fit image, and you can change the aspect ratio, which simply means that if you have an image that's very wide, it's gonna look better if you choose wide. And if you have an image that's very tall, it's gonna look better if you choose a tall aspect ratio. You also have the option to display your categories, your product search bar, and your sorting options. So if you don't want those and you feel like they'll be a distraction to your shopper, you could disable those. One thing you're going to want to make sure you do when creating the mobile version of your e-commerce store is go to the mobile editor and then click on the manage icon and just make sure that you click display mobile view. If that's not toggled to the enabled or on position, then people will see the full desktop version of your store even when they're on the mobile device. Now notice on the top of each page of my store, I have this bar. This is called the store bar. And by displaying this, it allows your shoppers to quickly and easily log into their existing account where they saved that billing and shipping information. So that makes it easy for them to repurchase from your store. It quickly and easily allows them to view the items that they've already placed in their cart. And then if they're ready just to check out and enter their credit card information, it gives them an option to do that. You can choose to display the store bar or not display it depending on what you're trying to do. You just uncheck the title there, show store bar if you don't want it to be displayed. However, I do recommend that you leave it enabled, especially when it comes to the mobile version of your store. Now I'm gonna show you how that works. You're gonna click on the mobile editor and you can see the store bar appears at the top of the page. When you enable the mobile view, you're going to get 
this good looking mobile friendly store just by default when you have the store bar and all of the sorting and category features enabled that makes it really easy for somebody to come to your online store from their mobile device and then find the products that they're looking for and then ultimately check out i'm going to show you what that looks like on the live version but what you'll do is you select each page like here I'm going to go to the account page like I showed you earlier and you can go into the mobile editor view and that's where you can see what that's going to look like on a mobile device. Another thing you can do with web starts is you can add things to these store pages. So here you can see that I've clicked to select the store widget is what we call it. Um, none of this you need to move around, but you can use a smart handle just to push it down the page a little bit. So if you wanted to come in here and add a message that said we're running a sale today or something, you could go over here, click add, choose text, select the text size you want to add. It's then just dropped on the page. You can then use the guidelines to center that up. You can use the handles to expand the text box, resize it. I'm going to center the text in the text box double click in the text box and then just say save 20 percent on everything you can also change the color of that so if i selected it and then i chose like a red or something so that it popped a little bit and i can also do things like make it bold just so it stands out and then when you're ready click save and then that's going to be applied to the desktop version of your page and then if you want it to appear in the mobile editor, you need to click on the mobile editor, go to your hidden elements. You'll see the element you added through the desktop version. Click the visibility icon and then it will be displayed. Then you'll need to save that mobile version of your page. And now when you click on view site and resize your page, you'll see that you have those mobile versions uh, with the message on it. Let's take a look at the feature that lets your shoppers save their shipping and billing information because that really encourages them to come back and make purchases from you time and time again. You can go to your live site by clicking view site and then if you're on a desktop computer and you want to preview what your site might look like on a mobile device, you just narrow your browser window and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to checkout, just click on checkout. And then this is the checkout page that your shoppers are going to see. And when they enter their billing and their shipping information, they're going to come down here. And if they'd like, they can check this box and then select a password. Now, once they create a password, they'll be able to log in the next time they come to your store and all that shipping and billing information will be saved. Here, you'll notice that they're prompted to log in. Uh, when they do come back to the checkout page, which is helpful as well. So far, I've shown you a lot about how to configure the store pages of your website to look great on a mobile phone. But you do have access to those supporting pages like your home page, about page, and things like that. So I want to quickly cover how you can make edits and changes to those pages. Just like with the store pages, you have to add new elements while in the desktop view. You can't do it from the mobile page editor. So for example, if I wanted to add an icon to my store, I would drag that, resize it with the handles. I can place it wherever I want, but then when I go to the mobile view, that's not going to be displayed until I click on hidden and then I unhide that element. Then I rearrange where that element appears on my page. Now, if you want to remove it altogether, you can go back to the desktop version and just remove it and then it won't appear on either the desktop or the mobile view of your website. So here you can see that it's gone. A couple of other things I want to show you is how to add a link. You can click on any element to add a link. You just select the page where you want it to link to. So if you want it to link to your store catalog, you'd find that under the store pages heading and you'd link to the store. You can also link to the cart, as you can see that's available, or to the different store categories, or to specific products even, if you would like. So what I've done is I've linked my button to just my store catalog page, so I select that and click Create Link, and then you can see what that looks like, because when people click on Shop Now, it takes them to the store catalog view. 
That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit webstarts.com to create your very own free online store for both the desktop and mobile device. I look forward to seeing you in a future video and be sure to subscribe and enable notifications to find out when I'll be releasing a new one.